Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we're joined by former Big Brother contestant, entrepreneur, mother of four, Erin Williams. Erin, thanks so much for joining us. Or should I say, a Erin? I'm sure you get that all the time, though, right? Yeah. Your name... Yeah, for people who don't know you, your name is spelled A-A-R-Y-N. Yeah. Um, and, and then you have like such a kind of standard last name, Williams. But yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, shout out to people who have unique spelled names because mine doesn't have a U. Have you always loved this uh, like I have? Well, I didn't. So my parents oh. the point um, in the uh, hospital room. He wanted to do E-R-I-N, the standard. And my mom wanted A-A-R-Y-N. She won the flip. Mom's um, win. It was hard because everybody, you know, when I was younger, everybody would make comments about it. But now I love it. But it, yeah, it, you know, when people spell my name on the Starbucks cup, it's always E-R-I-N. Mm. You know, every now and then, every once in a blue moon, so to speak, I will go to Starbucks and I will order and I won't say and I these people I know have no idea who I am. And they ask me my name and I'm like, Lara. And they, every now and again, will spell it L-A-R-A. And I'm like, oh, and I, my best friend growing up for like years and years now, her name is Laura, L-A-U-R-A. And of course, mine is L-A-R-A. One time we went to Starbucks together. They spelled both of ours with no U, with just L-A-R-A. Um, it, was in, it was in California of all places. So I don't know what was going on in Manhattan Beach, California, but one of the highlights, quite frankly, of my entire life. Um, I know it was about 10 years ago. But, you know, the Big Brother is kind of a big deal to do. I yeah. can't fully grasp what it's like to have constant cameras on you. Uh, first of all, what was that experience like? How did you end up on reality TV? Did you love it? Did you hate it? How was it? Uh, well, I was in college and I didn't really know. I mean, I kind of knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I wanted to be like Samantha Brown. I wanted to travel around. And God, what a great gig. Yeah. You know, because review food and hotels and just travel and kind of that was what I wanted to do. So I was thinking of all of these ways to kind of break into the entertainment industry. And I thought that reality TV would help me do that, which is funny. Um, <laughs> considering how it went. Um, but I thought that that would help me. And so I applied for Big Brother. I applied for, I even applied for the real world. And I was actually oh. the final part of casting for the real world. Whenever the Big Brother asked me to come for their finals, um, it was very like at the same time. And so I had a decision to make, like, am I gonna do real world or Big Brother? And I picked Big Brother. Wow. So, yeah. And are, did you feel like in the, obviously in the moment you felt like that was a good decision. Do you feel like that now in retrospect or do you wish you had done the real world? Uh, I don't know. You know, I really don't know because I have this platform now that I wouldn't have had if it weren't for Big Brother. I don't know yeah. if I had the same platform had I done the real world. I really don't know. But now like uh, I can pretty much do whatever I want and I can start a brand like I've done. Um, and I met my husband because I went to like this little reality reunion thing in Houston. And so it's like, there are certain things in my life that wouldn't have lined up the same way if I wouldn't have done it. So I have mixed feelings because as I'm sure, you know, uh, coming out of the house wasn't exactly easy for me. Well, tell everybody about your experience. Uh, so, okay. Uh, before we like fully go into that. So I grew up on a ranch. Um, my, my, uh, my dad pretty much only lived on the ranch. He was a rancher through and through, cattle rancher, like um, as rural as you can get. 16,000 so acres. So cool. I love it. But this man had never really been outside of his bubble. And so that was kind of, he was like my hero. He was who I modeled myself after. And there were a lot of ways that we talked that I had never been out really out of my kind of bubble. Um, I did go to Colorado for high school, but I was in a very conservative county in Colorado. I was also, um, I went to Texas State. And so a lot of the jokes, jokes that I made on Big Brother that got me in so much trouble, um, I had never really been exposed to a very um, diverse, like group of people to where I knew that the way that I was talking, like, wasn't okay. And that it was kind of just like my, you know, my bubble that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in the house, I'm making these things that I think are jokes and I'm, you know, acting out of pocket. And I got called out on live TV. I was 22. Um, and I got called out for it on live TV. And I was very shocked. Um, because, you know, Julie had, uh, 
immediately called me racist and homophobic, like right out the bat. I thought that I was going to be getting like, you know, clapped for because I was one of the top competitors in history of Big Brother. Um, I won more competitions than the majority of people who've ever played. So I was expecting to get a round of applause and like, wow, great game. I made it really, really far. But it was all about the comments that I had made. And I was just very, very shocked as a 22 year old. And I knew it was live. So I was very, uh, I was very panicked, like right off yeah. the bat. Um, and so the audience actually booed me when I walked out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, first of all, that's a, a horrific experience, I think, for anyone to have to go through. But at such a young age, at 22, and uh, on top of that, not really appreciating how other people viewed the things you'd said. And, and like you said, you really didn't have any intention of offense or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure that must have impacted you pretty deeply. Mm -hmm. It did, because a lot of the people, or a lot of the castmates they were saying that I had this horrible beef with we were actually like very close mm -hmm. um so I, that's another reason I was shocked because they had taken these you know you have to remember we were there 24 hours a day every day no right. TV, you know magazine no news no calls from your family it's just you and these people so they took my worst moments and these little clips of my worst moments I mean if you took my worst moments with my husband you would think that we hated each other no. I had great relationships with these and coming out of the house, it was as if I, you know, killed their dog. It was wow. bad. I mean, so I can't, I can't even imagine. Honestly, like it, it it's probably a, a good lesson or was a good lesson for you yeah. as to how, um, kind of disingenuous I feel like the, the mainstream media is and on a, a whole nother level, all of the things we see out there are not always real, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on a TV show like this, because as you're saying, look, you have 24 hours a day of footage to go through. And of course, what do they do? They go through and they pick the things that they know are going to get people worked up either in a good way or in a bad way. And they really kind of hone into that because they want ratings and they don't quite frankly care how yeah. it impacts anyone else, how it was going to impact you. They didn't even want to come to you and kind of give you a heads up about it. You had no idea, as you said, yeah, going no. into this. Um, so, yeah, I can I'm sure people can can appreciate from your standpoint how upsetting that must have been for you. But I have to give you a lot of credit because, you know what, you kind of picked yourself up. You moved on from there. You are now a mom to four girls and you met your husband, as you said, because you, um, you know, you were on Big Brother. You started your own clothing company. Um, and, I, you know, I've seen your videos on um, Instagram. You do such cool videos and, and uh, on YouTube. And um, I think it's great the way that you've kind of moved from that and become your own, an entrepreneur and become you know, something from, you know, what that all started as. So congratulations to you, I think, are in order for, for being able to, to pick up. How long did it take you before you were like, you know what, here's what I want to do. I think I'm going to continue. I'm going to kind of do, I mean, it is kind of a little bit of a reality show that you have on, on your YouTube channel, yeah, right? It is. Um, yeah. So right after I got off the show, it wasn't long after that I met my husband. Um, he wanted me to move in with him in Houston. I was living in San Marcos at Texas State. So I moved with him. I thought I wanted to be an event coordinator for a minute. That wasn't it. Um, you know, I I got pregnant. I was making I was making Yeti Etsy cups like the glitter. Uh, Yeti. Yeah, yeah. So I was doing those. Um, Can't put those in the dishwasher, by the way. Just going to be a public service announcement for people. I, I know. I know from experience. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So I was doing those, um, and while I was making my cups, I was watching YouTube. And I was kind of introduced to this world of vloggers. And I didn't, I mean, I knew YouTube. I wanted to do YouTube after I got off, but I had kind of like dabbled in it, but never committed. Um, but then when I was doing my, my glitter cups, I was typing in like, cause I was pregnant. So every week of my pregnancy, I would type in and be like six weeks pregnant symptoms. And so all of these women would go on and they would talk about their week of pregnancy. And I was like, hey, I could do that. That would be really fun to like document and go back and watch all of these weeks of my pregnancy. And I had a YouTuber named Anna Sacconi that I just really idolized. And so I just kind of modeled my channel after what Anna was doing. And it just 
like took off like right away because at the time family channels and pregnancy vlogs which i didn't realize like how viral they were at the time but that was like the thing to do when i did it so i got in just right place right time um yeah. now I did like a six weeks pregnant video i don't know if it would get you know the same amount of attention but at that time it was very the thing um and so i did every <clears throat> my first pregnancy i updated on my symptoms how my belly was growing like everything from a to z and i was very candid i didn't hold anything back um and it just took off and from there we did a little bit of family vlogging but i learned very soon that um i really needed to dial back what i was putting out there of my kids because reading the comments about me is fine but when it comes to your children it's a whole different ball game oh people are so insane out there First of all, let me just say this about people who have the um, gall, shall I say, to comment on, on somebody's post, whatever it is, a photo, a video. You know what? I, I think you and I probably feel the same way. I get it. I'm here for the good and the bad. I know there are people who no matter what I post are going to have something horrific and awful to say about me to say about the way I look, about whatever it is, like bring it on because obviously you guys have nothing better to do than to put negativity out in the world and comment on some person who you've never met, uh, you know, about their, whatever it is about them, their appearance or their persona. Uh, yeah. But you're right. The second you start messing with our kids, like that is it. What, I'm like, what were people saying about your kids? This is awful. Uh well, I was even getting death threats towards. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But, and I know that it was because of Big Brother. I know that it wasn't just like, um, I know it wasn't just like random people that just saw my video. It was people that hated me from Big Brother, you know, and then they would come on and make horrible comments about, you know, you know violent things that they would like to do to my children. So oh, nice. I, so, yeah. So I, I didn't realize that the internet was like that evil. I know they were evil, but I didn't think when it came to kids that it would be that way. And so I dialed that back a lot, um, changed what I was sharing. Um, at this point in time, I don't share them. I do share them, but not how I used to. I, we used to be very like, like family vlog, daily vlog. This is what we're doing all day. And now I really think before I, uh, I think before I post, because I know that a lot of people are going to have something to say. And I just, they're my babies and I'm, you know, I'm very mama bear about it. And, yeah. Um, so yeah. I totally get it. Totally. Yeah. How old are your kids? Six, five, three, and almost one and a half. Dang, girl. I mean, you really, you really went after it. I, my, I only, I only did two, and I feel like that's really my upper limit. But I mean, I give a lot of credit to anybody, quite frankly, anybody who has one kid. Like that is, that's a lot. Yeah. And so, given, given mad credit out there. But how is it with four? How is your husband with four? He's the only guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> Really lucky. I think about it all the time, like how good he is with them. And he's just bad. I did get very lucky because we had talked about it in a previous video. There are a lot of dads who just refuse to step up. But my husband will help like with nighttime routine if I have something I need to do that night. We have a nanny. So that makes everything just she's our angel. Um, but when it's just the two of us, like he will do his half. Like he doesn't try and do the whole year of the wife. You do everything like he really helps. So he's 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 a good guy. I love it. And I mean, it's it's not like you just have kind of a, an easy casual setup. You live on a ranch, right? You have like cats, goats, pony, rabbits. Like yeah. there's a lot going on there. Did you know? I mean, I guess uh, since you grew up that way, was that sort of the plan? Uh, I would have. I mean, I would love to have had this life, you know, younger. This would be like the dream life that I always wanted. I didn't know if, if I would have it, but this is like ideal for me. My husband helps so much with the goats and the pony because they're, they're a hobby. It's like a hobby farm. Like we don't get anything out of having, you know, well, she's a miniature horse. There's a lot of people have an issue with calling a miniature horse a pony. So she's a miniature horse. Oh, that's right. Yeah. By the way, you're exactly right. I'm an equestrian. So I, I should have known that, but I did. I'm not the one who told me that I'm not nope. going to say who it was, but someone <laughs> told me that. So, okay. A mini, a mini horse, of course. Yes. Who are many horses are like the coolest, greatest personality animals. If people just, are not aware, right? They're sweeter than ponies. Yeah. 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 And then we've got six Nigerian dwarf goats. We've got one Holland lot bunny. We used to have two, but my girl Holland lot murdered the other Holland lot. So 
we've got one. Um, I've got two ragdoll cats, one Persian cat, and then I have a Great Dane mixed dog. So we wow, love it. Animals. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm all about, I'm all about like a menagerie of animals. I have three dogs right now. My kids want, are like desperate to get a cat or maybe like two cats. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my husband is going to kill me. I did a big fundraiser recently for a dog rescue that I'm very involved with. And every time I go to do these things, I, I know my husband's like, like, <laughs> Please don't let her bring home another animal because sometimes it happens, Erin. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I can't turn away if they're, if I have a connection and they're calling me and they need some help. What am I going to do? Wait a minute. The <laughs> dwarf, the dwarf goats. I feel like I need to hear more about this. What, what size kind of goats are we talking about? Like how big I, are they? Well, they look like, um, like a young goat. I don't know if your viewers are familiar with like how an angora or a spanish goat like as far as size they never get to the full grown size of like love it angora or a spanish goat they're they look just like a like a young goat maybe two years old forever um, is the great so dane bigger than the goats yes oh twice the size fantastic god what a good time that is i feel like i, I we should have done this at the ranch honestly <laughs> yeah. so just come down there i mean let's do it again sometime um yeah. You know, it's funny because as as people are hearing your story, I feel like people probably listen to what happened to you on Big Brother and they're like, oh, yeah, cancel culture, blah, blah, blah. But you kind of experienced cancel culture, Aaron, before it was cancel culture, right? Because this was 10 years ago now. Is that right? Yeah, I think almost 11. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, and you, you didn't even know at the time that this what? was like a thing because that this yeah. sort of thing hadn't even started, right? I feel like I was one of the very, I don't know if I am, but I feel like I was one of the very first, like very widespread publicly, like internationally canceled person. Oh and gosh. I was at 23, I had no idea what that even was. Um, now, you know, with TikTok, everyone is canceled. Oh and yeah. Well, everyone's canceled for everything. That's why, yes. but I will say, you know what? They tried to cancel you, but you kind of proved that you are only canceled if you allow yourself to be, because you could have just kind of gone and hidden away. You could have been like, you know what? Enough mm -hmm. with putting myself out there. I see where that got me, like not really into this whole thing, but you didn't do that. You kind of stepped up and you said, you know what? This was my dream to, to go out and be in front of people and, and show them, you know, me and my life. And you did that and you're, you're doing that. You're, you're being incredibly successful at doing it. Um, and tell me about your clothing company. Cause I think that's awesome. Thank you. Well, we decided to start a boutique, but I had wanted to do this for the past, I don't know, three years, about three years ago, I decided that I wanted to have my own brand. And not only is it the uh, boutique, which I feel like a lot of influencers have and kind of influencer boutiques can be a dime a dozen. And I get that. But I had started a diaper bag line from scratch. Like we drew this up with pencils. Like I had hired a designer to help me draw it up. We went to Miami to find people to help us to start really from the ground up because I don't know if you know, but a lot of influencers can find these companies now where they already have a product and you put your stamp on it. Mm -hmm. They like my product. That is not what we did. We did the old fashioned way from scratch starting three years ago. And I just yesterday, the samples finally came in that are perfected that we can photograph starting tomorrow. Oh, so cool. Yeah, I watched I watched an episode of your your show on YouTube where you guys were doing like a photo shoot, right? Yeah, probably for the um the boutique. We were probably doing Yeah. It. Yes. Um but I I decided to do it because I was relying on brands like a lot of sponsorships and ads on YouTube because that was what was paying me at the time. Well, mm -hmm. every once in a while, you know, there's a wave of I feel like it's like up and down and up and down, or it has been for me since I started YouTube, where the ads are really good. You're making a lot of money. You've got a ton of sponsors coming in and then something resurfaces and everyone goes after your brands or, oh. um, you know, or your video gets demonetized for absolutely no reason. And then oh, we know oh. all about that. Believe me, they, they love that. It's yeah. so nice of them. Yeah. No explanation. And they don't need an explanation, Aaron. That's the frustrating part is these like overlords at, all the social media companies and all the big tech people, they just make the decisions. And then everybody else just has to like follow suit. We have almost no recourse 
for anything because in many cases, you know, these uh, none of these companies are regulated by any standards at all. It's just a free for all. Yes, they do whatever they want. And that yeah. was that I'm at the mercy of other people. And I wanted to be like, if I failed, I wanted that to be my fault. I didn't want anybody else to have a um, hand in whether or not um, I'm going to get a brand deal or whether I'm going to, my video is going to be monetized. I was like, I'm going to be the brand. I'm not going to do this anymore because it was getting really old. I had a company that made um, pre-made meals for children um, that they were sending me every month, like meals for my kids, like, and I would promote them and they were sending these meals for my kids. They pulled that because yeah. they had complaints. And I'm thinking like, okay, so the people that are complaining, you're taking, you're like, I can buy my kids meals, but you're literally taking food out of my children's mouths because you don't like me. I have done nothing on my YouTube channel to offend anyone. I've done nothing but speak positive on my YouTube channels and never, I don't attack people. I don't speak racist. I don't speak homophobic. Um, but since they did not like me from Big Brother, that got pulled from under my feet. And that was the first one. And I remember just feeling, I mean, it, it was a horrible feeling. And luckily now, like once the deal goes out, I'm going to get paid. My, my contracts are ironclad now. I don't do work if I'm not going to get paid for it. I have an attorney who does all my contracts. But before, like there had been brands before that would just not pay um, after I'd done the work because they got a complaint. So oh. no, we don't play that anymore. And we are our own brand. You're doing it yourself. I mean, that's the, that's the best way to do it. And, and I love that you took this leap. You know, it's for me, people all the time are telling me, oh, you should do this or that. And I kind of feel, I think the way that you do, which is like, if I'm going to put my name on something, I mean, it better be really, really great. And I mean, it's something that I want to wear every single day or I want to use every single day or whatever it is. And so honestly, that's why I haven't done that yet. And believe me, if I ever promote something and I ever have a product out there that I have my name on, better believe that I'm, I'm sporting whatever it is or I'm using whatever it is all the time. Um, because I agree with you, like it, it feels like that's, you know, it's hard to kind of put your name on something like that. Um, so I give you a lot of credit for being able to kind of take that next step and take that next leap. Um, and I think it's very brave of you to have continued down this path. Like you said, this was your kind of dream to do. Um, and you brought up, um, what's her name? Samantha, uh, who you wanted to be like, Oh, her name's Anna Sacconi. No, 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 the the one in the beginning, Brown. Samantha Brown. Okay, for people who don't remember Samantha Brown, I used to be obsessed with her show, and I agree with you. It's like the greatest gig on the planet. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember, she used to, uh, I forget even what channel it was on, like Discovery or TLC or something. Uh, she yeah. used, yeah, she used to fly around the world and just stay at beautiful resorts and yeah. dine at like five-star restaurants and just give you her review in, on a television show. So obviously we're all like living through her as she did it. But yeah, I mean, like, let's do that. Can we right. just make that gig happen? Is she still doing it? Or is there an opening for us? Right? I, I know. I don't yeah. think it is, but that's when we switched over to like Aaron and Nick on Cut, which is my website through Uscreen. It's a subscription, so and there's no ads on it, and people pay their a monthly subscription to watch the videos. So I don't have any advertisers to please. We say what we want, we do what we want, and we the money comes from you know our our I guess subscribers, our subscribers, yeah, but yeah, our subscribers that like the show, and so that way I don't have to worry about sponsors, I don't have to worry about ads, um, and they don't have to watch ads, and there so. You go. I love it. You've got it all worked out. Well, how, I mean, how's it going at the house with, with all the girls? Like, are you sane at this point too still? Because yeah, I don't, every day is, every day is a struggle for me. And I, got, no, I, I only that. have two kids and three dogs. You got the whole ranch and everything going on. Mm -hmm. No, I feel that way too. And th we, this isn't even the only ranch we have. So we're oh. on Anchor Ranch right now, but then I have my ranch that I inherited from my dad that's 16,000. So my oh husband, my portion of it, which is it's split three way between my dad and his two brothers. So my husband manages my portion. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're between this ranch and that ranch as far as that goes. So well, what, a, what a great way for your kids to grow up, as I'm sure you know. It's yeah. just so pure and wholesome. And 
um, just real. I mean, this is what life is about. It's not about, you know, putting your kid in front of a screen. It's about having them out and in nature and with animals and all of it. And I love it. I think it's great. Um, last question for you before we let you go. Would you or your husband ever run for political office? Why or why not? My husband wanted to. He oh. was into it for a while. And I kind of, I feel bad because I feel like I killed his dream. But I was like, I feel like there's no way because of me. I feel like they will rip you apart. And I don't want to see him have to go through what I went through because he watches it happen to me. And I know that it's hard for him to watch it happen to me. And I understand that when it's somebody else, it's still, even when it's your wife, it's still somebody else that it's getting yeah. at. And I just, I, it would be really hard for me to watch him go through that because it's, I'm surprised that I made it out of the other end to be completely honest. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so I would just hate to see him go through that. Um, and I, so I think I've talked to him out of it, but he's doing really good. He's got, he's involved in three different companies now. So I think his, his hands are full. He's got enough going on with, with the companies, with the girls, with the whole bit. Um, and not for nothing, politics is absolutely horrible. Uh, yeah. We would know, talk about people saying awful things about you and just being really, I mean, and of course, most of these people have no idea what they're talking about, but uh, right. I digress, you know, it's. It's how it goes. So maybe maybe a smarter move above all and just for everyone's sanity to stay out of it. Um, but I, I totally respect that. And I totally hear it. Where can people check out all of your stuff? Uh, if you go to my Instagram, everything funnels from there. I've got everything linked there. So my Instagram is just Aaron Williams with an underscore in the middle. A-A-R-Y-N. A-A-R-Y-N. We love yeah. that. We love yeah. it for you. Well, yeah. you are so great. Thanks for coming on The Right View. Um, thanks for continuing on and not letting yourself be canceled because it's a good lesson for a lot of people out there that you can only be canceled if you allow yourself to be. Um, yeah. So love that you're you're moving on and you're doing great things with your life. And we'll be watching in some, some way or another with all that you do. So Aaron Williams, thanks for joining us. To everybody at home, if you liked what you saw here, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow so you can see more of this. And we'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always going to shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested, my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also uh happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds so all around the trump household we're big fans if you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code trump again promo code trump you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. 
That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. Uh, a lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. We'll keep this a little secret between you and me and them and everybody. Whoa. The people that are actually at the tip of the spear, working directly with President Trump on a day-to-day -day basis to save this nation, they're all joining us on the Reawaken America tour. We have Pre President Donald J. Trump's Chief of Staff, Akash Patel. We've got Peter Navarro's joined us on the tour. We have General Michael Flynn. We have Eric Trump. The people actually working at the tip of the spear with President Donald J. Trump to save America are joining us on the Reawaken America tour. Whoa. If word of this gets out, if the truth about election fraud, medical fraud, religious fraud, monetary fraud, and mainstream media gets out, it may just save the nation. The Reawaken tour is coming to our place, hallelujah. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. Yeah, it's going to be lit. Wide slam open. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on May 12th and 13th, the Reawaken America Tour is coming to Miami, Florida, and to the beautiful Trump Doral Resort and Golf Course. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Reawaken America Tour is coming to Miami, Florida on May 12th and 13th. Get your sunscreen ready because General Flynn, Mike Lindell, Amanda Grace, Julie Green, Pastor Dave Scarlett, Dr. Judy Mikevitz, Cash Patel, and Team America are taking the Reawaken America Tour to Trump Doral on May 12th and 13th. And then we're taking the God-fearing revival Bible starting Reawaken America Tour into Sin City. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking the God-fearing Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada on August 25th and 26th. General Flynn and Team America will be taking the Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada. And the Patriots will be staying together at Trump International Hotel Las Vegas, located at 2000 Fashion Show Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, with zip code 89109 if you want to send them a letter. And yes, Alex Jones will be live and in person at the Reawaken America Tour, Las Vegas, Nevada. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, put it on your calendar. Get those tickets right now. August 25th and 26th, Eric Trump, Dr. Peter McCullough, Mel Kay, Dr. Stella Emanuel, Owen Troyer, Alex Jones, Seth Holhouse, Pastor Mark Burns, Pastor Leon Benjamin. We're all taking the Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen. Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's going to be August 25th and 26th. Thus far on the Reawaken America Tour, we've featured Dr. Dave Martin, the late great Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, Charlie Kirk, Donna Clement Petruska, Sean Foyt, Karen Kingston, Chad Prather, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Dr. Alan Keyes, Mickey Willis, Roger Stone, Dr. Richard Bartlett, and hundreds of patriotic speakers that you know, including Del Bigtree, Thomas Renz, Sidney Powell, Jim Caviezel, Donald J. Trump Jr., Peter Navarro, Klaus Schwab, Yuval Noah Harari, Bill Gates, and the godless globalists have their annual meeting called the World Economic Forum at Davos. But we that reject the Great Reset have the Reawaken America Tour coming to Miami, Florida and coming to Las Vegas, Nevada. Get those tickets at time2freeamerica.com. That's time2freeamerica.com. We have scholarship pricing to make these events affordable for everybody. Every Reawaken America Tour event has sold out, so request those tickets today at time2freeamerica.com. That's time2freeamerica.com. Or for faster service, you can send me a personal text to 918-851-0102. That's 918 851 one zero one zero two and to be bilingually sensitive that's nine one eight eight five one zero one zero two we hold these truths to be self-evident all men and women created by the go you know the you know the thing we will shut you down we will cite you and if we need to we will arrest you and we will take you to jail period i wasn't thinking of the bill of rights when we did this but no amendment no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. God actually spoke to me. He spoke about sacredness. He said to me, Kim, what I place in many, many people is sacred. And if anybody touches what is sacred to me, then it is the end for them. 
So what I've done in the United States of America is sacred. And there are people on every side that are trying to destroy what I deem sacred. And it's not going to happen. This is the definition of criminal conspiracy, racketeering, and collusion. This is not a theory. This is evidence. Because I have upheld this country to spread the light to the rest of the world. When you choose to go against the sacred thing that God puts into the very heart and the soil of this nation, this was sacred to God. Now is the time to act. This is exactly why I need some action for my people. Everybody is an honor to be with you.